Hey guys, so here I'm thrilled I have in hand the brand new 132 diecast from Jada Toys. These are out in Germany for some reason and I got them on the website Toddycom and I paid 12 euros each. So um, there's the long awaited Ford Explorer, uh, that's amazing. And a good surprise was the Jeep Gladiator from Jurassic World Dominion. Let's not waste any time and start with the Ford. So as you can see, there is the iconic packaging for the 30th anniversary. So you have the T-Rex logo, some kind of Explorer uh, designs. And look at that, it's super cool. You have that uh, yellow borders, just like on the Jurassic Park brochure. So super nice. And well, the car itself looks good. Now, what I did, because I always have questions the accuracy of vehicles, uh, is that I took these. Uh, it's a reference sheet with all the design elements from uh, Jurassic Park Explorer. And what I can already tell you, and it's a bit, um, it's a bit too bad that it is that way. But uh, when you look at the stripes, it's overall quite good. You have the right amount of stripes on the sides. Uh, even the hood logo is actually let me show you this way. It's really good. The logo on the hood is not the right one. It's only black and yellow, whereas the movie one has white and red as well. Um, for the side printings on the letters, it's the same. You only have uh, black and yellow, and the movie one has also orange and red. I guess it's, of course, a matter of costs. Uh, and then we have the <laughs> a bit disappointing parts. So the grill is fully black, it should be yellow, and it's not even um, the same plastic part for the brush guard and the grill. So this is a bit of a problem, I will have to repaint it clearly. Um, we have an antenna here, which is great, but the movie has two, and on the other door, no antenna. And the most disappointing part is that, I mean... <laughs> doing all this crazy work, adding the antenna and everything, it's great, but really not giving us the stripes here or even the license plate, clearly that's lazy. And it's really, really a problem. Uh, clearly this car must cost more than what they usually do because there are many paints on it. And I don't know if you noticed, but actually the car color is red. So all the vehicle is red and then the other things must be decal. So you have a yellow, lime green, and darker green. And clearly, um, I mean, it's just like the Tommy version, uh, the 164 die cast. So it's a very good idea, to be honest, because I think it looks way better to have the roof fully red than having fully green, like on the Matchbox. So actually no big deal. And even the fact that the uh, spaces between the windows are not black, honestly, it's not really shocking at all. Uh, but clearly, um, they, should, they, sh they should have given us the stripes at the rear. Um, clever thing was to make the taillights with the uh, guard uh, on the same piece, so that's great. And I don't know if I will be able to show you precisely inside the vehicle. I'm going to try, but honestly, um, it's quite hard. Yeah, you see a bit. You see the computer, the dashboard. Uh, these are actually quite accurate. You just have the cameras missing. Even the seats are great, but clearly it should have been beige. I know that for the 132 Jada diecasts, the rule is to have the interior black, but clearly they could use a bit of paint. So overall, it's very nice. The design is there. The stripes are very good. It's in metal, so quite solid as well. Clearly the only two things uh, for me, or that the interior should be beige, clearly. The rear stripes should be there. And if I had to add one thing, it would be at least paint this plastic part in green or make it green already. But honestly, for the price and <laughs> considering we waited 30 years to have a metal die cast of this vehicle uh, at this scale, I mean, it's pretty decent. And another cool point. I'm just like going everywhere with this review. You have the holes in the rims and it looks way better than what Mattel did. 
So honestly, it's a must-have. It has a few flaws. I just hope that Jada will make a larger version, just like on the Jeep, uh, because if they do, I'm pretty sure it will be more accurate. By the way, I also brought the Jeep so you can see, but with that uh, kind of weird scale, the Jeep always looks a bit bigger. So, you know. At least we've got them all and it's great, honestly. So Jada, uh, once again, this is amazing. It could have been even better with only a few details more, but really, it's amazing. <laughs> and then uh, we all knew about the Jurassic World Mercedes-Benz that we had, and now we finally have another vehicle. So it's the same for this one. I took some photos of the film, but let's first have a look at the box. So it's the classic Jurassic World Dominion design with the amber kind of logos, uh, the T-Rex with the sign. So, you know, nothing really exceptional about the box, contrary to the Ford Explorer. But, well, look at the amount of details of this vehicle. It's really, really impressive. Honestly, uh, I'm stunned. This one must cost a lot to produce. Uh, it looks really good. Honestly, it's amazing work. So now I have these pictures from the movie. So let's have a look. So as you can see, the orange box is there. Uh, all the metallic bars are also there and quite accurate. Uh, it's really impressive. One thing we don't have, uh, you have two colors of beige on the vehicle and here there's only one. Honestly, a small detail, but logo is at the right place. Um, honestly, it's kind of flawless. So in the movie vehicle, you have more accessories there and there on the vehicle, but honestly, no big deal to me. Um, even the rims are accurate. It's really impressive. Uh, if we take a look a bit at the rear here, it's the same. You can see it's, I mean, it's perfect. And to the front, because it was quite a good design for the movie, you have everything. So you have brush guard, the lead bar here, uh, you have this part to protect the windshield, even the LEDs are there. So really impressive work, uh, this needs to be said. Uh, so of course you can open the doors. I will show you more of the inside uh, in the photos after the video. The only small detail <laughs> that it's a bit bugging me, you see the height here uh, of the window. Uh, here it's, you know, due to the fact that this part uh, opens, there it's a bit thicker than here. So when you close it, it's not at the same level. It's a minor detail and honestly, <laughs> it's weird because in photos and in video, you see it very well. When you're holding it, it's not really shocking. But once again, uh, you have this on all the gladiators that Jada is making. But I'm really impressed because whether we, whether or not we liked the movie Dominion, this car was amazing and really well modified and so on. So I'm really, really glad that they made it. Uh, and with such attention to details, it's impressive. So. Congratulations, Jada, this is a must-have, clearly. Um, by the way, you know, there's the Angry Grill. Uh, in the movie, in the end, I'm not sure they kept it. I think they did not, uh, but minor detail. Really, we don't care, it's beautiful. So, what can we say? Well, Jada, we need more. I mean, you gave us these. Uh, don't forget that we have way more vehicles than Jurassic. So, we're just waiting for the M-Class from The Lost World. We're waiting for other versions of the Jeep, uh, more Mercedes from Jurassic World 1. So maybe why not the Textron Tiger? But honestly, it's amazing. Thank you, Jada.